Now it's time for Quarter Mile Heads Up Drag Racing presented by Extreme Diesel Performance. So we are back at Vandermeer Speedway for the second day in a row, and that's not usually part of the program at the Diesel Power Challenge. Yesterday we got rained out. We showed up this morning, and guess what? It's wet again. We can hopefully get this track dry, get our qualifying situation figured out, and then get into eliminations with these trucks in the Heads Up Drag Race. We got 10 trucks, so it's going to be 10 trucks in round one, five trucks in round two, three trucks in round three, and the final will be in round number four. Going to be very exciting. No weight on the back of these things. A bunch of them have roll cages, so we should see some pretty big and pretty impressive elapsed times out of these very powerful diesel trucks. So Rick Fox is the number one qualifier. He was supposed to sh square off against Buck Stoneburner, but is in qualifying. Stoneburner broke the transmission. He is unable to make the call, so you will see Fox. All he's going to do here is just stage the truck. Once he takes the tree, the wind light will come on at the top end. He does not need to complete the run. He simply needs to take the tree. He gets the wind light, and he will save his equipment for round two eliminations. Okay, so our next pair here, this side-by-side, -side, Jared Rice and the big dually. Going to line up to Jesse Warren. Warren out here all the way from Pennsylvania. This is one of the two six-liter trucks in competition. Warren did have the qualifying advantage by a significant amount of time. We'll see how aggressive Rice decides to get on the launch. Rice will need a whole shot and some luck, likely, to get to the finish line first as Warren. Winding the truck up here, inching it forward. He is now pre-stage. He goes into the fully stage position as Jared Rice will find that pre-stage beam here momentarily as he is moving the big dually ahead. So a pair of fours, a 6-4 engine, and Rice's truck at the 6-liter for Jesse Warren. And Warren really starts to feed the power into it past the 60-foot mark, although the truck does not sound too good in the eighth mile. Warren has a significant advantage down by 1,000 feet, and it will be Warren going 11.65 at 122, 13.42.5 at 96 miles an hour for Jared Rice. You heard Warren's truck come by right about the 330-foot mark. It not, did not sound the healthiest it sounded. It ran off the pace from yesterday, but still manages a round win, and he will move on to round number two. Well, a true David and Goliath situation here, but maybe not in the way you expect it. Goliath is actually the white truck over there, but the Von Miller behind the wheel. And Bill Witters is our number 10 qualifier. Duramax versus the big Stroker Cummins in LeVon Miller's truck. And you can hear the turbos light off under the hood of LeVon Miller's rig. through the eighth mile, undoubtedly looking over his shoulder as Witter's truck starts to make a pretty good charge at the top end. LeVon gives a little whack and the throttle goes 12.54 at 96. Bill Witter's though, 13.27.7 at 1.12. His, his best effort of the weekend by a mile. And so it will be a Ford on Ford battle here. Two different engine families though, the 6.4 powered truck of J.D. Gleason and the 6 liter machine of Jerron Holder. 6 liter versus 6.4, it's Ford versus Ford here in round number one of the quarter mile heads up drag race. Big starting line advantage for J.D. Gleason, but look at Jerron Holder. Holder by 330 feet starts to catch on him, but Gleason trying to keep a nose out, and here comes Holder at the big end of the racetrack, and it will be Gleason. 11.48, 2 at 124 miles an hour, a spectacular drag race. 11.32, 0 at 121 for Jerron Holder, and they were welded together from the starting line right down to the finish with Gleason moving on to the next round. So it's Corey Chomos and Jerry Atkins. Chomos, they're up there in the staging lanes working on the truck, it looked like, to get it ready. Atkins, being the sportsman that he is, waited for Chomos to be prepared. They came under the tower, and now there's another group of people gathered around Corey Chomos's truck. Looking in the wheel over there, and Corey has climbed out of the truck, and he's closed the door, and I'm not sure. This may be him throwing in the towel. He has unzipped his fire jacket. And that may be all she wrote as Jerry Atkins, again, a big move of sportsmanship here. Atkins, by all rights, could have come up and staged his truck and made this a one-man show, and it looks like it's going to end that way, but Atkins giving Chomos every opportunity to get his rig fixed. Okay, so Chomos making his way towards the starting line, and now Jerry Atkins is coming that way. Because he's trying to light that big, giant turbo off, Chomos is going to get right up there into pre-stage, work on getting that baby spooled. Atkins heading his way right now. You see... Atkins coming up to the pre-stage beam. He's going to be put there right by the crewman. And once again, Chomo's going to be shut off on the starting line. So basically, uh, Corey came up to the line. They had hosed off the engine in order to cool it off. So we thought it was just water. Last minute, 
I looked down, I saw it dripping. We had to, you know, cancel his run because he's got uh, oil coming out. So that's, uh, that's why he had to back out of the run. So Jerry Atkins, we'll see if his uh, plan is going to be break the beams or run her through. The plan is going to be to break the beams. Again, you want to save the equipment here. It is uh, These trucks make immense amounts of horsepower and torque. We've already seen one truck break. So if these guys can get around win without having to kill their stuff, they're, of course, going to take the opportunity. So here's the deal. Rick Fox, by nature of the fact that we had an odd number of trucks, gets the buy run in round two. You may be wondering, well, he had the buy run in round one. In fact, he didn't. He was supposed to be racing Buck Stoneburner in round one. Stoneburner couldn't make the call. And as it shakes out in round two, Fox is the number one qualifier, earns the buy. So he's just going to roll up and break the beam. He doesn't have to do a full run since he's not competing against anybody in this round. So basically to save the truck and make sure it doesn't break on a full run, he just has to start the beam. So he's broken it, now he's backing out, we'll go on to the next one. Jerry Atkins is coming now, this is the Ram. Atkins will be facing off against Warren. Now Atkins was able to get by the first round because of Corey Chomos had the problems. A lot of interest around these six liter trucks in the competition this year. There are two of them as we've talked about, Jerron Holder and Jesse Warren. They both did well on the dyno, they both did pretty well in the trailer towing obstacle course in the 8th mile trailer tow and they are really flying the flag for the 6 liter crowd. There are millions of these trucks on the road and the 6 liter Ford guys would love to see one of their own knock off a Cummins truck. Jerry Atkins does not want to let that happen. Both of these guys are experienced drag racers. Reaction time should be good. They both understand the nature of the game up here. Warren has a run down the track already. He knows how hard he can come out of the hole without busting the tires loose. We don't think he sprayed the truck last time, and he does have that nitrous button available, and he ain't afraid to use it. Good reaction times, and here they come. Both trucks side by side past 330 feet. You can see the exhaust start to clean up as Warren hits the nitrous button, and it looks like Warren's going to have enough, and he does. 11, 12 at 129 miles an hour. For Jesse Warren, upends an 11 19, one 128 mile an hour charge for Jerry Atkins. Score one for the six liter crowd. So it's LaVon Miller and JD Gleason coming now. Gleason in the 6.4 liter Ford and Miller in that familiar white Ram. One of the big things uh, separating these two trucks the fact that Miller's truck has a roll bar in it, Gleason's does not. So if we look at an NHRA rule book, we think, well, you go faster than 1149, you got to have a bar in the truck. That may be a problem because we have already seen Miller's truck run well below that number. That being said, we've also seen guys spread their guts out on the starting line this week. So you never know what's going to happen as we get ready to go down the racetrack here. Gleason's truck, pre-staged. LeVon Miller pre-staged. Miller's the first to go all the way in, and here comes Gleason. They're off. Oh, a huge starting line advantage for, Jim, for LeVon Miller. And Miller, not going to work the truck too hard. Knows he has him covered. Miller goes 11, 38, 6, 122. And Gleason goes 11, 72, 8 at 121 miles per hour. So here we go. It is going to be Rick Fox and Jesse Warren. Warren, of course, ran an 11, 12 the last time down the racetrack. The one variable here is Rick Fox has not had to make a run under power today. So Warren has made two. He knows what the starting line is like. He knows how hard he can come off the, out of the hole, and maybe he makes figures out a way to get to that 60-foot cone quicker than he has earlier. Fox is going to go off what he did yesterday, and by all rights, this track may actually be better than it was yesterday. So we had some good preparation on it, and the starting line has not been abused like it was when we were doing the trailer tow. Because of this rain delay, it has certainly changed the way this whole thing has played out, and Fox... May have his hands full here more than he expects with Jesse Warren. Warren did not come all the way from Pennsylvania to come up short and not make the final round. So you can bet he is going to throw everything, including the kitchen sink, at that black dodge of Rick Fox. And Warren's truck sounding good as he inches it forward. That six liter Ford trying to take out his second Cummins truck in a row. Can he do it? Both trucks in pre-staged. Warren is fully staged. In goes Fox, and it is go time. V8 are in line six. They're both out of the hole. And Greg Fox's truck is fighting for traction. Jesse Warren has a truck length on him. 
Coming down past the eighth mile, is Warren going to be able to do it? It looks like Warren's got enough, and it is going to be Warren. 1197, 6 at 12, 127 miles an hour. 1208, 1 at 127. And as we surmised, it was a very difficult launch for Rick Fox. So the six liter truck of Jesse Warren against all odds will be in the final round against LeVon Miller. Jesse Warren is coming under the tower. Will he be able to run? That is going to be the question as the starter has just given the notion to shut him off. We, had a, we have a rain shower that's come onto the racetrack, and both trucks are being shut off at the starting line. Wow. All right, well, LeVon Miller, normally when we talk to the winner of a drag race, we talk elapsed times, but today we're going to talk sportsmanship because the final round of this race, you were ready to go. You wait on your competitor. The rain started falling. You end up being declared the winner because of your qualifying position. But you you waited, and you you had the opportunity to jump on stage, but you waited. Tell me why. I was just I knew the rain was coming. I've been watching the radar, and uh, I really wanted to race Jesse. I mean, we ran yesterday, and I beat him by a little bit. I think I ran 11-0, and he ran 11-8. Uh, um, so I, I knew that he's a serious competitor that packs a punch, and I wanted to go all out and uh, hit the nitrous button and get a 10 second pass at Bandemir, but the truck's together and uh, I guess Mother Nature plays plays the part today. Well you had a very strong, it's technically still day two I guess because we're finishing up day two, but this the, day two is your day man, you look great in all three events. Yeah, very fortunate, uh, everything worked out on the obstacle course and the trailer tow, nothing to complain about, very blessed. So get to head over to Adams, go do some sled pulling and uh, you can let this girl eat one more time this week. I guess so. Go sled pole and then uh, make my crew clean the truck again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Congratulations. Thanks. Starting line advantage for, for LeVon Billard. And Billard, not going to work the truck too hard. Knows he has him covered. Billard goes 11 38 6, 122. And Gleason goes 11 72 8 at 121 miles per hour. So Miller, with a big starting line advantage, gets down there without any sweat to knock off JD Gleason.